Head tremors, so they're called EPS symptoms. That's That's a side effect of certain medications. medications. What, what happens, happens when the patient takes those meds? meds? All of a sudden, it could be two months after they started, it could be two years after they started. The patient's just developing twitching of their mouth, yeah. tremors of their hand, involuntary yeah. movements where they're moving the face of their neck muscles or their legs, and they don't have control over it. That's EPS symptoms. So, so what would we do if the patient developed those symptoms? We would stop that medication. And sometimes if we don't tell people that, and we don't recognize it soon enough, those changes can be permanent. And that's, that's a scary thought, right? right? That I'm taking medication and now creating this for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So they say it's, 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 it's a small incident. So, yeah, right. I mean, I, but nobody ever told you. And, that, and a lot of that education is where we're going to long term, we're going to stay on it. Um, I had my kids, um, they had migraine headaches, and I brought some different things for the nausea. Mm -hmm. Right. And now, in the last four or five years, different times they've had to go to the PR and say, hey, we're trying to wait for the right way because we found out that it did this. Right? So it's one of those things that we kind of live and learn, I guess that's what I'm um, So you'll still see it here. Ms. Anderson. What is the name of that medicine you just said? Metaclopramide. Okay. The other name is Reglan. That's a program that so PPIs, all meds that everybody takes are going to have side effects. We're going to have different things. We still use them because we need to use them, but we have to recognize what the side effects are. So, yes, if you're treating what are we doing? Dietary management, those weight, these are the meds. Why is it so important that we treat gas or What is it called that they develop that can give them to esophageal cancer? What's the esophagus called? What's it, what's it get labeled as? So it's with a B. Do you remember yesterday on the PowerPoint it said Barrett's esophagus? Okay, what, what is that? What that means? All that really means is the patient has a reflux that maybe isn't being managed the right way, or the meds aren't working the right way, or the patient's still continuing to eat that same diet and eat the same things that they shouldn't, and, and, and it's not the patient's fault, they just don't realize this is happening. And the, and the bottom of the esophagus becomes very inflamed and irritated. How would we find that on a patient? And how would we know they had that? What's the test that we would be doing? Somebody said an EGG, an endoscopy, right? An endoscopy when they go down with the tube. So now that we recognize, and your story might say the patient, uh, according to the EGG, has Barrett's esophagus, what are they at risk for if they have that? that? There you go. Cancer. It's also cancer. Okay. So everybody recognizes you have cancer. We talked about yesterday. Uh, you know, again, I'm trusting you guys are on at home and you're listening and making notes. I know it's harder at home. Oh, let me just go do the dishes and I'll listen to her while I'm walking around. These are the things that you're going to need to look in the books. That's the fact. This is what we. Uh, are going to have on NCLEX and real life in the patient has stress every frequency. So what would our dietary management going to be or medical management? What's Barrett's esophagus mean? How do they get esophageal cancer? It just puts them at risk for that. If somebody has esophageal disorders, what are some of the symptoms that they're going to have or they would come and present to us? Coughing. They might have pain in their chest area. Hoarse voice, their voice is kind of hoarse and scratchy, and it's not because they have a cold. What about what's one of the main symptoms that they will say that they have? Think about what your esophagus does. They could be coughing up blood. What do they have? What do they have trouble doing? Swallowing, eating. What did it occur to you that hey, I'm eating, and all of a sudden I feel like my food's getting stuck? It's not going down. I'm having trouble swallowing. We're not having trouble swallowing, right? You can tell I'm obviously not having trouble swallowing anything, right? We're all eating fine. So when the patient starts to say, hey, I can't eat, I'm having trouble swallowing, that should be a clue to us. Like, okay, well, maybe you need to talk to your doctor and get some kind of test done. Because trouble swallowing is not normal. It's not normal. So that's one of their first signs and symptoms. What do we say our treatment for esophageal varices are? What's the main cause of esophageal varices? So, oral what? 
Increase pressure within the portal. Make me aware. Yeah, hypertension. There it is. The patient has difficulty in their liver is not working. So they had increased pressure and inflammation in their liver. What could cause their liver to not work, right? I'm just trying to help us put all the picture together. It could have cirrhosis, it could have hepatitis, it could be an alcoholic, it could be a viral hepatitis, or it could be anything that's damaged the liver. And now we have an increased pressure, inflammation, infection, irritation in the liver. Because that happens, the vessels surrounding the liver also become inflamed and irritated. Those vessels attach to our esophagus and intestines and increase. Um, inflammation and, and irritation in our esophagus. So it's kind of like it goes hand in hand because they kind of work together. together. So now we have um, increased pressure, likelihood of bleeding in the veins in our bottom of our esophagus. And when they start to bleed, that's called esophageal reaction. Can someone die from that? Yes, they can. Is it a medical emergency if you're yes, bleeding in esophageal reaction? Yes, it is. How are you going to know if you're the nurse taking care of the patient? What are they going to do? Throwing up blood. What's the word for throwing up blood? Hematemesis. Write that down. That's a term you need to look at at the start and say, hey, I know what that means. Hematemesis. That means the patient is throwing up blood. Would it be normal for us to throw up blood? No, no. If it's bright red blood, we better be thinking what is going on here. Where are they bleeding from? What's their history? Do they have a What can we do if it's just conservative management and the medicine stop? But what if they were bleeding five days ago? Now, what's the emesis called? That's like black. What do we term it as? Something we like to drink every day. Coffee ground emesis. What does that mean? This means old black blood, right? If you had blood down in your esophagus from three days ago, what's it going to look like 72 hours from now? It's going to be old black. I'm sorry, I'm going to like coffee ground so that might be in your story where the patient has coffee ground emesis. You should then be thinking to yourself, okay, they were bleeding from somewhere, and this bleeding isn't great now, but it could have been a day 